So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this next talk that will be about a tool that is called MicroPPENF. And so that's a tool that we developed and uh, it serves its purpose. And that is, uh, it acts like one tool that uh, installs Python packages into your environment. And it complements PPENF, Poetry and PIP tools. So all these uh, package installers uh, in Python universe. My name is Fridolin and uh, let's have a look at what we have. So first I will talk about Python packaging in general. Uh, then uh, we will take a look at uh, existing formats for resolving and installing dependencies. So I will mention tools such as PIP, PIP tools, PIP and Poetry. I think these are uh, the main tools for installing Python packages in uh, Python ecosystem. Uh, then I will introduce MicroPPENF. Uh, we will uh, discuss why MicroPPENF was developed, uh, why there was that intention uh, to create it. And uh, I will talk about how to use it, uh, why uh, to use it, and uh, how you can use it also in uh, Python uh, containers uh, run inside uh, OpenShift cluster. And then at the end, uh, I will talk about best practices, how to install dependencies uh, inside uh, containers and how uh, you can manage your applications so that uh, they are maintainable and you gain uh, benefits of uh, proper uh, maintenance of your uh, projects. So uh, first on our list is Python packaging. Uh, each time I talk about Python packaging, I uh, see this picture. Uh, it's uh, uh, coming from XKCD and it discusses how complex Python packaging is. And really, uh, if uh, there are some issues, that these issues can be on different uh, levels and uh, there are a bunch of tools that you can use. Uh, and uh, how to configure them properly, uh, not to go into some dependency traps or dependency hell. Uh, with MicroPPEN, we did not introduce a new node in this dependency graph, hopefully, uh, but we rather tried to uh, reduce the complexity in Python uh, packaging. Uh, if we take a look at uh, modules that are installed, uh, these can be found uh, on the Python package index. That's the public hosted service uh, managed by the Python Packaging Association, PyPA, and you can find it on pypi.org. Uh, at the beginning, it was really an index. So uh, it was a page that linked other pages where you can go uh, and download artifacts into uh, your computer and manually extract them. Later, uh, there were developed tools such as uh, Easy Install uh, to uh, install them. Uh, this evolved over time and the current implementation uh, is called uh, Warehouse. Uh, if you uh, see the picture that is uh, a picture from uh, Sketch uh, Monty Python uh, and uh, it's a sketch called Cheese Shop. And that's exactly how uh, the PyPI was uh, named. Uh, the sketch is about a uh, cheese shop where cheese is not present. So a guy walks in and wants to buy a, a cheese, but there is nothing really to buy. And that's uh, exactly how PyPI uh, looked like. But nowadays, it's really a service that uh, serves uh, its purpose. And you can find millions of packages uh, that are open source there. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, just to mention, uh, it's called PyPI. Uh, some people pronounce it PyPi, that's not correct, and the pronunciation should be really PyPI, the package index. If you would like to host your own artifacts, uh, you can still do so, and many people uh, do that. Uh, they host their own uh, Python package index, and uh, you can install uh, dependencies from there. The only thing you need to follow is uh, the PEP standard, that is PEP 503. And an, as an example, uh, we run uh, our own uh, index where you can find uh, TensorFlow builds, which are uh, optimized uh, for AVX2 instruction sets. So if you do machine learning and you use uh, TensorFlow, uh, feel free to visit our uh, index and use our builds of TensorFlow uh, when, where you can gain uh, performance. Okay, 
So the next step is to go th briefly through existing tools and for for formats that are available for uh, resolving and installing uh, Python dependencies. The first one is pip. Uh, I probably don't need to introduce it uh, in the Python track. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, pip install whatever package you would like to have in your environment. So uh, in this case, we are installing uh, micro pip env. Pip stands for uh, pip installs packages. And um, previously it was called py install. It was renamed because the install uh, felt uh, too redundant. And now uh, we have just pip. Uh, pip is uh, the recommended tool for installing packages by uh, the Python Packaging Association. And it really does its job uh, pretty well. It downloads the artifact, uh, extracts it, uh, issues a uh, building process if there, if there are some uh, extensions and delivers the package to your environment. However, uh, it does not manage uh, log files. Uh, these log files uh, are pretty uh, good to have because if you are developing an application, uh, you state in the log file all the dependencies uh, that the application is supposed to use. And uh, you have one, let's say, file uh, that states everything, every artifact uh, that you need to uh, install on Python layer uh, to run your application. PIP is also not good in obtaining information about installed uh, artifacts. So if you would like to know from where the package was installed, uh, you cannot do so. So if you install, uh, for example, requests from uh, PyPI, uh, you cannot find out that it was uh, installed from, from PyPI. Also, uh, you can end up with broken environment when you use PIP. And this is mostly uh, caused by, by Resolver, uh, as multiple installations or multiple installation runs can broke your environment. Uh, there is a new feature that is uh, Advanced Resolver. Uh, you can enable it using uh, use uh, feature uh, 2020 Resolver. And uh, this Resolver implemented using backtracking tries to address uh, issues uh, with uh, older PIP releases. And um, as stated, PIP is not uh, that directly suitable for Python applications uh, that you uh, develop and push into a cluster. Uh, so uh, we will try to find another solution. So let's take a look at PIP tools. As stated before, uh, PIP does not manage uh, any log file. And this is something that PIP tools try to address. So you manage uh, uh, requirements in file that states all your direct dependencies. And with pip tools, you run pip compile that transfers uh, these direct dependencies, resolves them uh, into requirements txt. And then you have two files, requirements in, requirements txt. These two files you can push to your Git repository. And every developer that is cooperating with you pulls the repository and runs pip sync inside virtual environment to install dependencies that are stated in requirements txt file. So already resolved. You have kind of uh, reproducible environment. And uh, as stated, you need to manage two files, that is requirements txt, requirements in. Uh, by convention, you can also state your developer development dependencies in dev, dev requirements. Uh, sadly, pip tools does not enable hashes uh, by default. But it's something uh, good to enable. So if you are using pip tools, you can uh, turn on uh, hashes generations that is uh, performed by pip compile generate hashes. And as said, uh, pip tools does not manage any virtual environment. So you need to do on your own. Then uh, the workflow looks like this. You create virtual environment, you activate it, you install uh, some uh, dependencies and uh, commit files like requirements in requirements txt. And then uh, your Work coworker can uh, pull changes, create his or her own environment, and perform pip sync to install uh, dependencies, uh, the same dependencies at, as you had. This is quite verbose, and uh, that gave birth to another tool that is called pipenv. So with pipenv, uh, people tried to address uh, this verbosity and uh, 
PipEnv manages uh, environment uh, for you. So it manages uh, creation virtual environment, automatically syncing uh, packages, up updating these packages. And uh, everything uh, is stated in two files. The first one is pip file. The second one is pip file log. And in pip file, uh, one states direct dependencies with some additional configuration like Python version requirements, source configuration, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, then uh, pipenv ta takes this pip file and resolve de dependencies. So it actually implements a resolver and uh, states resolved software stacks inside pip file log. That is a file uh, in, uh, in JSON format. So it manages a virtual environment for you. It, uh, it has also some neat features like uh, deploy. So when you are deploying your application, pipenv can ensure that you are running proper Python version, uh, your direct dependencies did not change and stuff like that. Uh, a good um, thing is that you can uh, ship pip file and pip file log with your application and then uh, anyone can uh, uh, download pip file and pip file log and uh, reproduce a Python environment that you had. It's worth also to state that pipenv is the recommended tool by the Python Packaging Association for managing log files. And pipfile.log uh, is, uh, let's say now, standard for managing uh, log files. So uh, we have quite, uh, quite uh, easy uh, workflow. What we do, we pipenv install and then uh, we deploy application. Uh, sadly, one of the disadvantages of pipenv is that it's not that verbose. Uh, it hides a lot of information, and when you are installing dependencies and pipenv fails, uh, it does not produce uh, logs many times uh, that would be helpful. So you need to dig into uh, issues and find out from uh, logs uh, what went wrong. The last but not least, uh, that is uh, the uh, least, the last but not least tool that is available out there is called Poetry. And that is a community uh, effort to address issues in Python packaging. Uh, it uses two files, uh, PyProject Tomo and Poetry block, that are uh, two files very similar to uh, pipenv files, but not, uh, not compatible. And Poetry manages these files for you and it also manages the whole life cycle of your application. So it acts more like a tool that uh, also enables you to pu publish your uh, source code on PyPI uh, and uh, uh, release life cycle and stuff like that. So it assumes that your application is actually a, a, a component uh, or application, uh, not just library. Uh, it also uses non-standard version specifiers that is kind of uh, set and uh, some uh, metadata stated in the files are redundant, uh, such as description of packages, uh, but uh, poetry states it uh, in, the, in the files. And uh, these were tools that were available out there and uh, we decided to implement our own and that is uh, micro pipenv. Uh, MicroPipenv on its own, it's very lightweight wrapper for pip. Uh, so uh, it has something like 900 lines of code. If we count also uh, comments, uh, you can end up uh, with uh, 1,200 lines of code. But it's really a uh, lightweight wrapper addition to pip. It uses internal pip logic. And uh, everything is implemented in one single file. And uh, uh, MicroPipenv has uh, two dependencies. Uh, one is pip, as it relies on the pip's internal logic, and the other one is uh, tomo or pytomo. Uh, that is optional dependency and is used for parsing uh, pip file or poetry uh, specific files that are uh, written in tomo uh, language. Suddenly tomo is not in the Python standard library yet, uh, but there are discussions to include it. So hopefully uh, we will uh, get uh, it's available there. And as stated, it's one single Python file, so it has uh, one advantage. I will uh, show it to you. Uh, the simplicity behind implementation uh, is that it does not use a resolver. Uh, it already uses uh, implementation that is available inside pip, or uh, it uses uh, packages uh, that are 
stated in log, for, log file formats. So there is no need to have any resolver implemented. And with this, uh, it is some complement to complementary tool to the tools stated. So uh, it does not compete with uh, tools I've discussed, but rather it creates a new layer, compatibility layer for all uh, the tools that I stated. So how does it look like? If we want to visualize it, we can see uh, micro pen uh, as one layer that is using pip under the hood, and then uh, optionally also tunnel. And the input is any uh, requirements file uh, as produced by pip, pip tools, pip env, poetry. Uh, it automatically detects uh, what, um, what uh, log file format is used, and it can automatically install uh, these dependencies. Why is it beneficial? So uh, if you imagine running uh, micro pipenv in an uh, OpenShift uh, S2I build process, uh, users can use whatever uh, type of uh, whatever tool for managing dependencies. MicroPipenv automatically detects uh, what dependencies or what the dependency format is used, installs dependencies uh, transparently, and the only thing that is uh, present is MicroPipenv itself, pip, and toml. So uh, it's really a lightweight addition to uh, Python S2I build process and can make uh, many uh, users uh, happy. So micro -pipenv was designed for containerized applications, as you saw, and as we will see, it was designed for uh, OpenShift uh, S2I uh, Python build process, uh, but it's not limited uh, to this use case. Originally, uh, we had issues with uh, pipenv uh, as community was not that active and the release process behind pipenv is quite uh, difficult and uh, long uh, when it comes to uh, manpower that is required to uh, go through the whole release process. Also, pipenv bundles a lot of vendor dependencies that we didn't want to ship in uh, Python uh, S2I containers. And uh, we really wanted to introduce a common base for installing uh, dependencies. So we introduced a tool that can rule all the open source tool uh, for managing and installing uh, Python uh, dependencies. As MicroPipenv is very lightweight, it also reduced uh, uh, builder container uh, size. So Python S2i was reduced by 13 megabytes uh, almost. Uh, with MicroPipen, we also took care about uh, logs as uh, we want to have applications uh, easy to debug. So if there is some issue during installation, we really wanted to have uh, variables, but not that much variables logs. So uh, people can debug and see what's happening wrong uh, with their application. And we also wanted to reduce maintenance burden when maintaining uh, uh, PIPEN itself and with all the bundled uh, dependencies. You can install a micro pipenv using pip, so issue pip install micro pipenv. Uh, you can state optional uh, extras that is tunnel, and then you just run micro pipenv install. Optionally, you can pass a dash dash deploy tag that uh, mimics uh, pipenvs dash dash deploy uh, that is uh, used as an option to uh, install command. I stated that MicroPipenv is a single file, so if you do not want to install MicroPipenv for any reason into your environment, uh, but you have access to the internet, you can simply issue a curl command that downloads the Python script, and you can pipe it into the Python interpreter, uh, pass install, and optionally an, uh, an option to pip this dash dash user, and everything automatically happens. So you don't really need to install micro pipenv. The prerequisite is uh, to have uh, pip on your system that I believe uh, all Python uh, people have. Micro pipenv is also available in Fedora. Uh, you can install it using DNF install uh, micro pipenv. This way I would like to thank uh, Lumir who packaged and maintains micro pipenv uh, in uh, Fedora. If you want to give MicroPipenv uh, a try in containerized uh, environments, you can use uh, Python-based uh, 
S2i and you can pass enable micro ppen for you need to set enable micro ppen uh, environment variable uh, that activates uh, micro ppen that is already pre-installed in Fedora based Python uh, 3 S2i container images. Uh, this, this feature is available only for Python 3 container images uh, as micro ppen supports only Python 3 and if you are using Python 2 then you should also consider uh, uh, switching to Python 3. Again, I would like to thank uh, Lumir, uh, Lumir from Python uh, team uh, for cooperation and making this happen. Hopefully, uh, micro ppen will be also available uh, in RHEL and UBI-based container images. And another way how to try micro ppen is to use uh, TOTS uh, enhanced Python S2i container images. So these are container images uh, that are uh, enhanced by TOTS team and we install uh, micro ppen into them. Uh, they ship micro ppen by install so you don't need to uh, set any environment variable and you can also find UBI 8, Python 3.6 uh, container images or Python 3.8 uh, running also UBI 8. So uh, if you want to do so, uh, feel free to pull these images and uh, use containers uh, with micro ppen shipped. As stated, uh, at the end, I would like to say a few best practices. So if you are developing a Python application, really use log files. Uh, and ship these log files uh, with your uh, application. Uh, consider pinning all the dependencies that you use to specific version uh, that can reduce your maintenance cost uh, later on and it will give you uh, the power of reproducible installation installations. So if you come back to your project one year later, you can still see what packages were present and what packages you uh, installed for running your application. Uh, even thought these packages will be, for example, deleted from PyPI or uh, these uh, versions will not be available, you still will be able to track down uh, what, so what uh, software you used on, on Python level. Uh, also, having these log files uh, gives you the power to uh, do integrity checks and also provenance checks. So you are sure that you are using the right uh, uh, artifact and uh, coming from, from the right Python index that you configured. So uh, feel free to use uh, pip tools. Uh, that manage requirements in requirements.txt, but don't forget uh, to enable hashes as I did in the presentation, uh, or uh, use pip file log uh, as used uh, by pipen, or if you wish, uh, you can also use uh, poetry and poetry specific uh, log files. Uh, I mentioned a few times project TOT, so uh, at the end I will uh, just briefly uh, discuss uh, this project. So uh, micro ppen was uh, born in project TOT. Uh, that uh, project is in AICOE, that stands for AI Center of Excellence. Uh, we are a team in the office of the CTO and we are trying to make Python a better uh, world to uh, code in, to develop applications and as you can see also push these Python uh, applications to OpenShift uh, build process and run uh, these Python applications uh, inside your cluster. If you would like to follow uh, our updates, uh, you can do so. We have a homepage, uh, we have a separate organization on GitHub where we post uh, almost all our source code, and we have also Twitter uh, for uh, updates. What we do, we do a recommendation engine for Python applications and uh, we do uh, an advanced Python resolver uh, that can help manage your application more sanely and also deliver uh, better software when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, quality. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, where we post updates and you can follow also our, uh, our uh, Scrum demos, so we post updates uh, there. That would be from me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I will post this presentation in the in the link uh, 
uh, and it will be also available in the Tot Station organization on GitHub, on GitHub in Talks repository. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we do have a couple questions. Um, are, I'm going to assume the question about the hashes was answered during its best practices, but if you want some elaboration, by all means, feel free to comment in chat. Uh, the other big question was, where to go? Does MicroPip ENV have integration with Miniconda 3 or VENV? Uh, no. Uh, so if you want to use MicroPip ENV, you need to manage your uh, virtual environment on your own. So that's something that all is already done in case of uh, OpenShift uh, container. Okay. Um, the, end of the process. Or that yes was to the hashes question being good. I guess for your own edification, the question was, um, what are the advantage, advantages with using generated hashes? But it sounds like you covered a fair amount of that in the uh, the best practices in talking about locking in so you can reproduce it at a later point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, excellent. Um, I don't see any other questions. Uh, thank you so much for this. Um, this was a very interesting whirlwind tour of um, a lot of tools that I hadn't really played with just yet. Um, and, and kind of seeing that progression was a really cool way of presenting this. Um, yes, ours all clear with it. Cool. Um, so awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you coming out for this.